Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark with Word of Faith Fellowship and have some things that I have in my heart to share. Um, as Christians, we believe in Jesus. We are believers. We, we surrender our hearts to him and we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that he's the Savior of the world. And when these things are in your heart, there's all kinds of things that God leads you and guides you to change your heart and change your life. And in this day and hour, it's becoming more of a, a less um, acceptable, shall we say, thing to be a Christian. And that's okay, because Jesus said that's how it would be. And especially as the day approaches that Jesus comes back, it's going to become more and more uh, persecution of the Christians. And we're seeing that even in our own country that we never thought would happen, and it's happening. And um, so out of that, I, I want to read in uh, Matthew chapter 10, in verse um, 32, it says, Therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before men and confesses me out of a state of oneness with me, I will also acknowledge him before my Father, who is in heaven, and confess that I am abiding in him. But whoever denies and disowns me before men, I also will deny and disown him before my Father who is in heaven. So right there you see the separation has begun between those that believe in Jesus and those that do not. There is clearly a separation that takes place as soon as your heart begins to go after Jesus, begins to submit to, to God, and you begin to believe in Jesus, and you begin to surrender to him, that you know, it, the thing, interesting thing here, as we read on, you'll see, he says, everyone that acknowledges me before men and confesses me out of a state of oneness, I will also acknowledge him before my Father. So here I am acknowledging Jesus is the Son of God. That the, and does that mean that just by do that one thing that Jesus will acknowledge me before the Father? So let's go on and read some more. It says, but whoever denies and disowns me before men, I also will deny and disown him before my Father who is in heaven. So this, this confessing is not just what I just said. It's in everything that I do, in my lifestyle, in my decisions, in what goes on in my, my heart, in what goes on in my mind, in, in the decisions that I make, in the attitudes that I have, in everything, if it's dependent upon Jesus, that's acknowledging him. So if things don't work out the way that I think they should, and I get upset about them, I'm not confessing Jesus. I'm not going to him and and and, and find out what Jesus says about it. So for example, if the election did not turn out the way that I wanted it to, and the man that I voted for didn't get elected, didn't come into office, what do I do with that? You know, it doesn't matter to me what happens as long as I hear from God what God says. It, it, there's a song that we sing, kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, but Jesus is still Lord of all. So in the midst of whatever goes on, whatever happens in my life personally, that happens in the in our country, in the world, it, all that matters is what God says. And that my lifestyle is a confessing of Jesus. It's a coming to Jesus and see what God says about it. And where I put my trust in him and not in circumstances. And that, that if things work out the way that I want them to or I think they should, that I'm happy. And if they don't work out the way that I think they should or how I want them to end up, then I'm not happy. I don't want to live my life that way. And God didn't call me to live my life that way. He called me to put my trust in him and depend upon him and confess him in my heart and in my with my mouth and with my lifestyle in everything that I do. But whoever denies and disowns me before men, and if I don't trust Jesus, I'm denying him. If I don't trust him in the outcome of things in my life, I, I'm denying him. But if I am at Jesus, I trust you that the bills will be paid, that this area in my life will change, that this thing over here will happen the way you said it would. If I put my trust, no matter what it looks like, then I am confessing Jesus. But whoever denies and disown me before men, I also will deny and disown him before my Father who is in heaven. 
That day will come for all of us. And I do not want Jesus to deny me before the Father. He says, and then he goes on again. He says, do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. That's a hard saying. That's a difficult saying if you don't understand these first two verses. There is a separation that takes place. There is a, a sore that happens. The minute someone makes that decision and makes that choice to go on to know God. And there is a separation that takes place with you that don't want to go on with God. That don't want to put their trust in God. The war is on. And then it goes on and says, For I have come to part asunder a man from his father and a daughter from her mother and a newly married wife from her mother-in-law. Wait, I thought he's the Prince of Peace. I thought everything's supposed to be better now, now that I, I believe in Jesus. But we see that there's something that happens spiritually that when you take those steps and you begin to seek Jesus and believe in God and your heart begins to go after God, there's a separation that goes because not everybody goes on to know God. Not everybody wants to. Not everybody wants to put their trust in God. Not everybody has a concern to be ready for that day. I mean, that's reality. And in an hour we live in, it's like to even to be a Christian, it's becoming more and more controversial. It's becoming more and more to, to have a conviction in your heart. And Jesus warned that this would happen. And a man's foes will be they of his own household. You, my enemies will be my own family. He who loves and takes more pleasure in father or mother more than in me is not worthy of me. That's a hard saying. And he who loves and takes more pleasure in son or daughter more than in me is not worthy of me. This is Jesus talking. These are the words of Jesus. So this is reality. And he who does not take up his cross and follow me, cleaving steadfastly to me, conforming wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying, is not worthy of me. Did you hear that? He who does not take up his cross and follow me. Jesus' cross was the cross. <laughs> and he did the will of the Father. He fulfilled that call. He picked up his cross and he went all the way through with it. And there's things that God has for me to walk through and things for you to walk through. And we have to make that decision hard to pick up that cross, that will of God for our life regardless of how things look, how circumstances are, and follow after the will of God and complete the will of God. Who, he who does not take up his cross and follow me, cleaves steadfastly fastly to me, conforming wholly to my example. In living, that's our lifestyle, that day to day, Jesus said, I, I, I can of my own self do nothing, but as I hear the Father, then I obey. Then I make the decision. That was his lifestyle. And that's the same lifestyle that we as Christians are called to have. Conforming wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying also. If, if you don't do this, you're not worthy of, of Jesus. Whoever finds his lower life will lose it, the higher life. And whoever loses his lower life on my account will find it, the higher life. That's what we want. We want that. We want that, that, that lifestyle of a confession of confessing Jesus. We we need that in this day and hour. We need our stability to be God, to be what God says. What our trust being in Jesus in every area of our life, personally and in the world, in our community with our relationships at work, at home, our lifestyle is a lifestyle of confessing Jesus. Jesus, what do you say? And that's what I believe. That's what I'm going to go by, what God says. And that's why it's so important for us to have a heart open, to inquire of God, to seek God, to hear his voice. That's the will of God for our lives. That's what God created man for, was to hear his voice and obey him. And that's, that's what we want. And so uh, moving forward on to uh, Matthew 26, you can see that uh, in verse 
33. This is Jesus. This was the Last Supper. Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross to lay his life down, to pick up his cross. And he begins to talk to his disciples. He says, you will all be offended and stumble and fall away because of me. This night, distrusting and deserting me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Jesus knew what was up ahead. They did not. They did not see what was up ahead. They, they did not know their own hearts. Jesus is telling them, you will be offended. Why? Because of that warfare, that heavenly demonic powers that were coming in to, to kill the Christ. And Jesus knew that they were not ready. Their, they, their hearts were not ready for that level of demonic activity coming. And the, the demonic activity that's coming forth in the earth this day and hour the, the, is unbelievable. It's things that we never could have imagined, the darkness that's taking over even our own government. And so you will all be offended and stumble and fall away because of me this night, distrusting and deserting me. Jesus, I don't want to distrust you. So Peter speaks up and he says, Peter declared to him in verse 33, though they are all offended and stumble and fall away because of you and distrust and desert you, I will never do so. Peter did not know his own heart, did he? I mean, here he's pretty firm about this. I'll never deny you, Jesus. But he didn't know what was up ahead. He didn't know. He didn't understand. And that work was not done in his heart. I will never do so. Jesus said to him, Salome, Jesus said this in response to him. I will, Jesus said, Solemnly, I declare to you this very night before a single rooster crows, you will deny and disown me three times. And Peter's, Peter didn't let it go to his heart. He said, to him even in if even if i must die with you i will den i will not deny or disown you and all the disciples said the same thing they did not know their heart did they and they really felt like they knew jesus and they really felt like their heart was going to be faithful to god all the way through but jesus knew the hearts of men and jesus knows my heart and he knows your heart and he knows whether we're ready and he knows whether we're not ready and the thing that I've seen through my life is Jesus always makes a way for me to be ready. And he always makes a way for you to be ready. There's always things going on that if, walk, if we walk through it, crying out to Jesus, hearing God's voice, letting God deal with our hearts, letting God change us, then when the next thing comes, we have oil in our lamp. We are ready. We can walk through it trusting God and believing God. And that really is what we need. We need that more than anything because that separation is coming in the earth more than ever. And we've always been a free people. We've always had the liberty to be Christians in our country. We've always been able to worship God with all our heart if we want to or if we don't want to. But the things that are coming forth more and more day by day come against that. I mean, we have laws. We've had laws in this, this previous year where we were not allowed to come together as Christians and worship God. It's been a different day and hour to walk in. And what do you do with it? Do you press into God more or do you lay back and you draw back and, and say, I'll just go with the flow? We don't want to be like that. We don't. The Bible says, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, especially as you see the day approaching. And when laws start being passed, make it more difficult to come together and, and worship God together with our whole heart, then you know that things are beginning to change. And we want to be ready. And so that, that's where the next place I want to go is in Proverbs. And um, when I was a young man, I didn't, nobody I knew knew God. Nobody that I knew wanted God. Nobody talked about the Bible. Nobody talked about scriptures. Nobody talked about hearing God's voice and obeying him. It was just nowhere around me. And yet, there was something going on in my life 
that I didn't know how to describe to other people. And I understand it now. And God, the drawing power of God was very strong on my life. I knew it, but I didn't understand it. I knew that God wanted my attention. He wanted my heart, but I had no idea what to do with it. I, I just... I, and I, if I talk to my friends, they like, what are you talking about? They want to go get drunk. They want to go get high. They want to go party. They want to go do whatever. But nothing, no. I'm like, am I the only one? And at that point, that was the only, I didn't know anybody. And so, it, you know, with, when that was so strong coming to me, that drawing power of God, God drawing me unto himself, I just wanted to get my heart right with God. I thought, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. There are so many things in my life that are so contrary to God. I why why is he drawing me and I didn't know what to do. And that was very strong in my life. And I began to really just in in, in a naive way say, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to get right with you, God. I don't know where to go. I don't and at that point, my I, I had I was living up north, and my parents had relocated in uh, Tennessee, and and all I knew to do was go visit them. My mom went to a, a non-denominational church, and I went down and visited them, and I ended up staying there. And uh, and in that that turmoil of a, a very carnal young man, a godless young man, and yet God draw me. I I didn't know what to do, and and. I just started reading my Bible, and I started reading in the book of Proverbs. And how I did that, I can't exactly tell you. All I know is, I this is some of the verses that he began to open me in my heart to him. And in chapter 2, the, the my Bible opened up of Proverbs, and it said, My son, if you will receive my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to skillful and godly wisdom and inclining and directing your heart and your mind to understanding, applying all your powers to the quest for it. Yes, if you cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek wisdom, godly wisdom, as for silver and search for skillful and godly wisdom as for hidden treasure. I had never done that before. I sought a lot of other things, but I had never sought God. I had never sought the wisdom of God. And it became, it became so real to me. I looked up every verse on seeking God. And I began to, and, and that's where he began to take me in the book of Proverbs. And my life really began to change. He's because he says, then you will understand the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of the omnipotent, omnipotent God. That's what I wanted. That's what he was drawing me. I was responding to him and God began to reveal himself to me. It was an amazing time in my life that I'm so grateful for that this is what we this is what we need to do like never before is to seek god really seek god from your heart and ask jesus where do you want me to read ask jesus to put a hunger in your heart for god's word because the bible says that he is the word and when you come when you read your bible not seeking God. It's just a dead letter. It doesn't make any sense. And for so long, the Bible made no sense to me. But when I began to seek him and seek wisdom, then the, the word of God became so real and I began to experience God. I began to experience Jesus. I began to hear his voice for myself personally. If you seek wisdom as for silver and search for skillful and godly wisdom as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. That's what we want. That's what we need to do in this day and hour. For the Lord gives skillful and godly wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. If ever there was a time that we need to hear God's voice, it's now. This is not the time to draw back. This is not the time to become complacent. This is the time to seek God with our whole heart. 
he hides away in verse 7 sound and godly wisdom he hides it away and he stores it it says for the righteous who are the righteous those who are upright and in right standing with him god how do you get in right standing with god how how by seeking him by desiring him by treating him more precious than silver or gold and then this is what happens it happens it says he is a shield to those who walk uprightly and in integrity that's what happens then the then as you seek god with your whole heart you seek the wisdom of god you seek the voice of god for your life then there is a protection that comes on your life it doesn't mean that things won't happen but in the midst of it in the midst of it there's a, a protection on your life to save you from every assignment of the devil at you. I, can't, I was I was reading this the other day and I thought of several young people that I know that were in extremely bad car accidents and they walked away from them. One of my dearest young friends was in a car accident and his car hydroplane, it's, I don't know completely, but they say that the witness says it went front and backward like that and then landed correctly and he walked out without a scratch that was the protection of god another y- young man was driving his car down the road and a truck ran him off the road he went down a ravine the car flipped and was right by a creek no you would have all the trees fell back you wouldn't even know where what happened to him and he got up and he walked away from that without a scratch that was the protection of god there's so many things in our life that you know assignments of the devil to destroy us and it will succeed if we don't have that protection but we want that protection of god he is a shield to those who walk uprightly in integrity that he may guard the paths of justice yes he preserves the way of his saints that's what that we want that guarding of our paths that we go the right way we don't go the wrong way if we go the wrong way it will turn out bad for us it will go if i go the wrong way it will turn out bad for me if you go the wrong way in your life it will turn out bad for you in the end it might look okay the bible says there's a way that seems right to a man but in the end there's death and destruction i don't want to be that man and you don't want to be that man that walks away in your life and everything seems like it's okay and it's fine but in the end it's death and destruction for you because you didn't walk the way of god that's the worst thing that could happen to us and so god promises that if we seek him that he'll make sure that doesn't happen to you or me and so we're going to seek god we're going to believe in jesus we're going to be true believers that put our trust in jesus and acknowledge him and confess him not just with our mouth but with our lifestyle in our thoughts in our attitudes in our decisions in our motives of our heart and all this all these verses talk about a person that is seeking god and god begins to do that work in our hearts to preserve the way of his saints now i grew up as a young man uh, my parents were catholic and saints were people on uh, statues in in the in the church <laughs> they weren't and, and and the pope decide who was a saint but I, i've come to understand that saints are believers so if we believe in jesus we put our trust in him we surrender our whole heart to him we allow the spirit of god to come in our hearts then we and we are believers we are the, the we are the saints that he preserves it says in verse 9 then you will understand righteousness justice and fair dealing in every area and relation so in every situation if i'm going to if i seek wisdom if you seek wisdom if you seek god with all your heart then you will understand righteousness right way of doing things you understand justice you understand fair dealings in every area and relation yes you will understand every good path so before us every day in our lives are many paths to go many directions to go but we want to go on that right path we want to do that thing that god wants us to do for this day that's what i want that's what i'm crying out to god every day of my life to do what god wants me to do and not what mark wants to do 
you know, God give us, gives us a will. And with that will, we surrender it to God by putting our trust in Him and inquiring of Him in everything that we do. And then, then we will understand every good path. And you know, the Bible gives the example of, it says, let the Holy Spirit be the umpire making deciding with finality any decisions. So if there's many directions that your life can go right now, let the Holy Spirit be the umpire to say, should I do this or should I do that? Should I go here or should I go there? Should I take my life this direction or should I take my life that direction? Because there's many paths for your life. But the only one that will lead to God is the one that the Holy Spirit says, this is the way for you. This is the way, Mark. This is what I have for you this day, this moment of this day. And more and more that becomes extremely and vitally important in our lives. That we are where God wants us to be and we are in the center of God's will for our protection. For skillful and godly wisdom shall enter into your heart and knowledge shall be pleasant to you, to your soul. Knowledge shall be pleasant. So it's not pleasant. The way of God is not pleasant to you if you're not seeking God. It's, why do I got to do that? Well, that's ridiculous. What? Why can't I? There's always a war in your heart. You war with your maker. You war with God. And anyone that God sends to you, any messenger that he sends to you, you have a hard time with you. Hard time with them. You reject the message, you reject the messenger. We don't want to be that person. We want to be that person that's seeking God and that skillful and God, godly wisdom has the ability to enter into our hearts. Truth can come into our hearts. And it's pleasant to us. It's pleasant to our soul. It's That's right. We agree with God. That's a good place to be. And discretion shall watch over you. Understanding shall keep you. Listen, to do what? To deliver you from the way of evil and the evil men. I mean, look at the promise of God, the the promise of God to deliver you from evil and from the evil men, from every plot and plan of the devil against your life, from men who speak perverse things and are liars. God will deliver you from all of that, from every assignment, every evil thing, every evil person, every evil liar, every perverse person. That's what happens. That's the amazing thing that you go from uh, uh, just a man in the world, a man under the sun doing your own thing, on your way to hell, not even knowing it, to all of a sudden, you be, God begins to give you understanding. Take your path the right way. And then even the assignments where the devil tries to send this at your life, to tempt you this way, to pull your heart away that way, then he will deliver you from that. Men who, from people who forsake the paths of un, uprightness and to walk in the ways of darkness. God will deliver you from those kind of people because those are some of the most treacherous people you'll ever meet. People that once knew God, once walked with God, but forsook the paths of uprightness. They left the way of God to do their own thing and walk in the ways of darkness. There's people that do that. They leave God. There's people that walk in darkness and they want to. The, 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 who re, who rejoice to do evil. There are people that rejoice to do evil. Isn't that unbelievable? And delight in the perverseness of evil. They love and they delight themselves. They rejoice in evil. You don't want to be that kind of a person. I don't want to be that way. And so, you know, all these years since I was that young man reading those things, I can see how God has done been doing a work in my heart to change me from someone that turns away from uprightness turns away from that path loves darkness which i used to love lo- used to rejoice in evil used to delight in perverseness and evil verse 15 who are crooked in their ways they're wayward they're devious in their path we don't want that to be who we are that's that's where God God wants to take us. In the last verse of that chapter it says, "But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the treacherous shall be rooted out of it." 
We don't want that to be you and me. We want to be someone that seeks God. We don't want to be deceived about ourselves like Peter was. We want to put our trust in Jesus. We want to delight ourselves in God. So this day, seek Jesus with your whole heart and let the Spirit of God reveal Jesus to you.